morning and welcome everyone to the beginners online trading webinar my name is Danny and I will be giving you the webinar today before we will begin I would like us to go through a quick sound check to make sure that the sound is on a proper level and that the screen here is visible for everyone so please use the question section to comment that the sound is okay and that you can see the screen Thank you, Frida. If more people can tell me that the sound is okay, because again, my indication is just the system and it seems fine. Eric, thank you, very good. Okay, Doria, all right, perfect. So I shall explain what will happen in the webinar and then we can carry on with ease. Uh, initially, we will open with a quick introduction to Avitrade, what services we have in our facility, what some functions here is doing and some certain logic behind uh, the interface on this side. Okay, so just a quick introduction to the services and what we're offering in our facilities and on a nutshell, the platforms that we have. And then we can move to the second part, which will be much more practical. And we will look at the chart, analyze a couple of things and go through the toolbar here and some functions uh, pending orders, regular orders, some more informative uh, things, and so on. And lastly, analysis. I do understand that uh, getting to the third part takes uh, takes some time. Okay, so this is why I always mention it as a bonus for analysis because it's not the tour purpose of this webinar. Okay, this webinar is supposed to be. Uh, for beginners, but we're we're learning uh, intermediate and advanced things as well. But I'll put an effort and see if we can make it to the analysis, even if it's just on a nutshell to give you an idea of how it works. Uh, yeah, any capital markets and trading information disclosed in this webinar is provided for uh, informative purposes only. It should not be constructed or applied as an investment advice recommendation or suggestion. Now I understand. Um, let me just, okay, so the webinar is recorded. I wanted to make sure that the webinar is recorded, but first I wanted to let you know, because this is a very frequent question, if we can uh, get the webinar, if we can watch it again. So the answer is absolutely yes. You can find the recorded version in our channel on YouTube. Uh, typically can be today, hopefully today or tomorrow. And uh, yeah, so as I said, I'm just gonna make sure that everything is as supposed to be. And then I'll be back and we can hit the road. So I'll be right back, thank you very much. Okay, so it seems like everything is okay. Like I said, I'm Daniel, this is, big, uh, this is the Beginners Online Trading Webinar, uh, Trading Success uh, Blueprint, and we can finally begin. Just getting myself somewhere to jot down the notes. Okay. So as I said, we're going to begin with an introduction to, so Avitrade is obviously a regulated company. As many of you know, we exist since, since 2006. We have uh, nine licenses worldwide. Right here at the bottom left, you can get contact with the customer service through the chat or the WhatsApp. Okay. And Okay, so this interface is called the web trader. Obviously, to see this bit, you have to be logged into the website. But if you don't see that interface and you wish to apply it so you can contact the customer service and, of course, enjoy the rest of the amazing features which I'm going to show you, you can simply send an email to customer service, okay, and they will fix it for you. Another individual that you can contact in case you have uh, a query or anything related to trading is your senior account manager. Uh, yeah, we do assign senior account manager on an active account, which is funded, okay, depending on the eligibility. Uh, so one of those can assist you with applying the web trader, and then you can contact the customer service on the chat. Okay, a senior account manager is not only for customer service matters, it's more into uh, trading and uh, anything that you can think about under this umbrella from calculations, a trading plan, a guide through about a platform, market review. Okay, all those trading aspects can be 
um, addressed by a senior account manager. Now, as I was explaining, let me start just lining down the platforms that we have just so we can go through them. Okay, so the web trader, as I said, it's also, this may be the, the desktop version, but we also have it in the app, okay? It's called Avago. We have the regular uh, platforms, okay? Which is MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. We have Ava Options and Ava Social. Now, Ava Options is obviously for options trading, okay? Apart from, uh, as you know, uh, MT4 and MT5 in the web trader are all CFDs. So you can see the leverage is here. I didn't choose it or anything. It appears it's embedded in the system, contract for difference. So we are trading leveraged uh, trading. Each asset has its own leverage, okay? It's It can be different. And other options is for options. And other social is for, uh, as it sounds, okay? It's a uh, social media and it lets you follow or copy a trader, which naturally can be extremely helpful for beginners because as a beginner i'm not exactly sure how i'm going to do things and what i'm going to do and following somebody can be extremely helpful just absorbing from you know just watching somebody else doing something that means that if i'm following somebody i'm actually going to get uh, notifications with his positions and it's up to me if to uh, do it or not and if i'm copying somebody so that happens the same way but automatically so i'm going to get notifications with the one i'm uh, copying what he's doing and as an addition it will execute it by itself okay i can always stop it if i want and so on and i can switch or follow somebody else if i want okay all right so those those are the platforms um do we have any questions about anything that i said so far even though it's more of a of an introduction okay so let's proceed with the web trader for the time being i'm going to show you a couple of features here um okay let's actually usually i'm covering the signal but i think that today we're going to begin with ava protect since we didn't review it for a while now and uh yeah should jot it down this one should be at the bottom of the list Okay, now the reason that I'm <clears throat> that the reason that I'm uh, separating it from the rest of the platforms is the features that I'm going to show you now are only on the web trader or the Avago. Okay, you cannot see him, you cannot see the features that I'm going to show you or uh, on any of those platforms. Okay, to begin with, we're going to review Ava Protect. Ava Protect, what it does is it lets you, you don't have to remember it. Obviously, if I'm just pointing on this bubbly eye, I can just read and understand what it does. <clears throat> but now I'm going to write a brief uh, description. So it lets you protect a position for a certain time frame. Right? And whatever you lost during that uh, time, you will get back, okay? And it's important to know there is a fee when using the service. Now, how does that work exactly? So first of all, let's understand why would I want to protect a position, right? What what a position needs to be protected from. Can somebody give me an idea? Actually, we're always looking at gold, so I think today we're gonna diverse. And we're gonna go with silver instead. Right, and let me also clarify for you guys that Ever Protect is um, working with Forex, silver, or gold. Yeah, or gold. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is simply show you a demonstration about a scenario that can happen when using EverProtect. Um, the, as it, I wrote here, so it lets you protect for a certain time frame. What 
time frame exactly, the time frame that we can choose. Now, when I click on the box here, it's, it's going to let me choose. You see, one hour is the bare minimum. It's going to show me that the fee here is 29.48. Let me just minimize that to the bare minimum. Okay, so with 0 0.01 with silver, the fee is 737. Okay, watch what happens when I click on the plus here to expand my coverage. Also, I can confirm it down here, right? It's going to show me. Okay, now three hours it costs a bit more, six hours a little more, one day a little more than that, and two days considerably more than in the beginning. You see, right, the difference? And please watch while I also increase the load size here. I hope you guys can see <clears throat> can see here. For two days, I'm going to be paying 1961. If I increase, that increases as well. Okay, we already increased that time 10 times more, which makes sense to have it 10 times more in the fee and so on and so on <clears throat> now let's go with okay with ever protect let's go for a buy now the price as you can see is uh, 24563 okay so we're simply gonna keep let, let's keep it as a buy uh, let's make our take profit Okay, I'm going to explain to you in a minute what, what it means, right? Take profit. And the stop loss. Okay, let's make it green just for the sake of the discussion. So we'll know that this is the destined profit and this is the destined, not exactly destined, but this is the, uh, the stop loss potentially. So I'm going to click here on take profit. Now what it does to take profit is it closes my position with the profit, okay, if it reaches that level, and if it reaches that level, okay, so when I'm buying something, my intention is that the value will increase. If God forbid it decreases, then I'm gonna have a loss. How much can I lose? So this is the interpretation between my entry to the destined uh, price, which is, as you can see, it's typically a, a, a dollar difference. Now, because we acquire 100 units, um, we can make or lose $100. Yeah, it's very simple to understand. You can make this comparison. Watch if I increase it to five. So five is 500. And 500 is, well, 500. Very simple. I increase it a little bit, a little bit more. 600, yeah. Now, you're probably wondering, how come Danny 0.06 is 600, right? So let me just show you. If one lot equals to 10,000, I can, I don't have to do this, okay? I can just go to here, instrument details, and right here, it's, it's showing me load size 10,000. They're very simple. Yeah, oh, it wiped out the numbers, never mind. Quickly going to do that again. Click on Ava Protect and expanding it as much as I can. Then click on Take Profit and on the Stop Loss. Yeah, very simple. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the way that this works, as you can see, the fee here is only if I'm using the service. If I want to be using the service, I pay no fee. Okay. Now, in this scenario, we have potential profit of 116, potential loss of 116, and a fee that we have to pay, which is 19.61. Just a moment, guys. All right, <clears throat> so as I said, this is very, very easy to understand. This comparison actually make sense. It's not a bad comparison, paying a fee of 20, uh, getting 112, uh, 116, or losing 116, then getting them back, it's not a bad bargain. But if it would have been like this, let's not exaggerate, if it would have been like that, right, as an example, yeah, so I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be that happy. Why? 
because I'm paying $20 almost to make 32. It's not such a big difference. Same apply with a, with a loss. I might as well not use it at all. So to use this product efficiently, which is a remarkable product, um, this comparison this comparison helps you use it more efficiently. Okay, I hope it makes sense. Uh, do we do we have any questions about what I've explained? Feel free, guys. There is really no need to hesitate. Uh, you can just you can ask whatever you want. No problem. Are there any questions? Any questions at all? Okay, so we can proceed. Just a second. Okay, we can proceed. All right, Ever Protect is one of many features that I'm going to show you. I'm not going to show you many features, but this interface has many unique features, and I'm going to show you some of them. The next thing that I'm going to show you is the economic calendar and also the news section. But let, let's begin with the news section. So I'm going to click it. Yeah, and in here I can filter whatever I want from the news, right? I have your Forex stocks, commodities, indices, and crypto. What What's also included that is nice about the tab here? There is a question from Os Oscar. Do you have to use leverage with Ava Trade or you can open an ordinary cash account? This is not something we do casually. I think you might need to ask your account manager and depending on your case, we might be able to do something with the leverage, but in general, it's not something that we, that we, uh, we, it's not something we do casually. I hope it makes sense. Okay, but check with your account manager. I'm not, I can't think of a way you can uh, lose from asking. All right, uh, yeah. So in here, what's included, as you can see at the bottom, we have the related instruments. Another question from Vu Isile. Is labor protect fee of $20 st standards for all trades? No, no, that is not. Just a second. This is why. I wanted us to see the difference when we changed when we changed the uh, not only that it's not that it's not I want you VU Sila I want you to watch what happens with the fee when I decrease or increase the time length so you see this the the expiry time has an impact on the fee and as well the load size has an impact as well. So the bigger the position, right? The bigger the position, the bigger the fee, right? And as well, if I'll take something else like gold, right? Okay, so 0 0.01 with gold. It's already, oh, okay, it's three dollars let's spend it all the way to the two days is okay it's ten dollars but you you understand right not only that the fee isn't fixed the fee is compared to the load size or the time length i hope it makes sense yeah um yeah this this is pretty much it i mean there is no reason to go to pro too comprehensively with how it works. Okay, and it's provided by the Trading Central. And here you can refresh, see if there are new things. And yeah. Now here at the bottom, you have discovery. You can find all kind of interesting things. Okay, analysis views and market buzz to see what's more fluctuative. And then, okay, let's give it a moment. Yeah, and then you can just see what is mentioned and according to that maybe strategize in here you have some nice ideas and in here the economic calendar I'm just going to go through uh, through that very briefly because again i want us to make it 2d um 2d analysis part hopefully okay now in here it's very similar to the news section you have the 
uh, importance. That's basically how big the impact is going to be on the market with, that we that we are estimating. You can filter it by the impact in here. So if I want to focus on high impact or I want to focus on medium impact, okay, can reset it at any time. Okay, if I click here on the reset. Um, in here, I can choose what's more relevant for me. So if I'm more focused on the, oh, now everything is marked. Let's demark everything. Let's suppose I'm more focused on the czar as an example. And I watch here, let's suppose that I'm waiting for the um, interest rate decision, right? So, okay. This is how it looks like. This is how it looks like. And I'll be looking at, you see, it, it's organized with what happened last time. We'll call it previous. Forecast and actual. And again, how big the impact is. When I'm clicking on the tab, it's going to look, it's going to fall down. Why isn't it? Oh, I, it's already clicked. <laughs> I already clicked it. This is why. But how do I fold it down? Let's see. Okay, so you see if I click here on the interest rate decision, it opens this nice uh, interface. I can check the volatility, I can check here the price, all kind of things. But yeah, I can also add it to my calendar, right? Yeah, here it will explain what it means. And okay. All right, um, do we guys have any questions until now? Because I do wish to proceed to the second segment and show you a couple of practical things. Let's go with done. Actually, you know what? Let's pick something more interesting. Let's go with platinum. I think it's should be oh did we think we use this? Okay, never mind. All right. So as you can see, oh, let me let me show you another another quicker way to bring up the asset that you want. So by clicking here, it's going to throw me back to the default screen. Guys, I see people raising their hands. There is just no need. Okay, this is a live webinar. You can just ask whatever you want, and I will address your question accordingly. Okay, you don't need to. Uh, get permission to ask questions just go ahead and do it okay so in here if i click on ava trade it's going to throw me back to the original place where i started with and if i want to bring up an asset i can simply put down here platinum okay and then click on buy or sell and then I'm going to click in here to expand the chart. Okay. Let's have a look at it for a second. Yeah, that looks very good. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down a couple of things that will hopefully, just a second. Yeah. So as I was about to say, we're going to write down a couple of things that will help us construct the position beginning with the time. Uh, sorry, beginning with a target time movements and units. OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of a number that I would like to achieve, because usually when I'm analyzing. I want to know what kind of amount I'm planning to make. Otherwise, I have no indication how far I want my target to be. So for instance, if I'm analyzing this as potential reversal, let's suppose, oh, let me actually, let me give you a guide through about what's happening up here. And then you'll know, I think it might be better before we, we begin. Okay, so you, you'll have a nice idea about what those buttons are doing and how to actually use this interface to its full extent. So the first thing that I did is just expanding here the two arrows. 
Then what I did is I clicked on buy. It doesn't really make a difference if it's sell or buy to get this to open, right? It opens anyway, and I can change it. All right, in here you saw that I used it as a search field, so I can just delete here and write down whatever I need, okay? In here we have the time frames, which we can just change, okay, and it will change. Uh, each candle is gonna be the time frame represented here. So one day makes it daily candles, each candle here is a day. Weekly candle, that means that each candle here is a week, okay? And presently, uh, yeah, let, let's stay on, on weekly for now. Okay, in here I can change from candles to bars or to line, and then, okay. In here we have the no crosshair or the crosshair. Okay, presently we're using no crosshair. That means that we have no data from the candles. Let's change to the crosshair. Okay, and then of course, uh, and then of course I'm getting information from the candles just by pointing on the uh, candle. It's going to show me here open, close, high, and lows. Okay, and <clears throat> in here uh, I can split split to different layouts, or I can have one chart if I need. Okay, I can change it. And right now we have the FX indicators, we, which we can add an indicator, okay? And then we have the lines here, which we can add on the chart to help us indicate support and resistance. Just a second. Okay, so what we're gonna do, right now we're gonna, try and fulfill this four ingredients that we wrote down. So as we said, the target is what we are planning to make on this position. So we will have an idea where can be a good destined price. Now, let's suppose that I'm gonna analyze this as a buy, all right? And I'm aiming for a certain price. Let's suppose I'm aiming here. Okay, Let, let's write down, let's think about a reasonable number. Again, my balance with a demo is $10,000. Let's say um, $1,000, maybe $700, $700. Okay, time length can be one week for now, because we're looking at weeksly, uh, well, <laughs> weekly. And that also helps you, the, the reason that I'm thinking of a certain time to make the 700, it's because if I don't capture the time, right? One year to make 700, it's a long time to make this, this kind of money. One month, maybe also it's a bit too long to make 700. One week, I'm pretty much okay with that, right? Hopefully, if I would begin with 700 in one hour, maybe it will take me a lot of margin. We'll see, okay? The more realistic it will be, the the the, the easier it is to comprehend how to do it. Okay, if I'm planning to make it in a minute, you'll see that I, I will be required a lot of margin, okay, or uh, a lot of price difference. We're gonna see that. Okay, so let's go one hour, uh, one a week, okay, and the movements, let's also write down here, price difference. And in here, we're gonna put load size, okay. So in the movement, in the movement, how can we indicate if this is a good price to aim for? Okay, so what we're gonna do, what we used to do, okay, back then, is to simply look at the previous week. Okay, as you can see, I'm pointing on this candle. Let me put a rectangle around it. Okay, so we will know that this is the candle that we're analyzing. Now, when I'm looking at, the, at, at this candle with a yellow rectangle, we're gonna put here open, close, high, and low. And in here, I'm simply gonna put the numbers from the candle. The open here is 940.8, close here is 910.2, high is 940.8, and low is 891.2. Uh, well, zero, yeah, 
flat. Okay, so what we're gonna do is simply take the number here, subtract it by the number underneath, and then we can pretty much understand the length between the beginning and the end, when the market was open to the price that it was closed with, which is $30.6. And if I'll compare the bottom to the top, we're gonna have approximately, well, we're gonna see in a moment, we're gonna have approximately 50, if I'm precise, so 49.8. Okay, but the problem is that if I do this with a single candle, you can see that previously we had smaller candles, we had maybe somewhere bigger candles, we had different candles. Okay, so one, one candle doesn't mean uh, any average, okay, because it's on its own. Now, to start and do the same exercise I did here with so many candles, it's consuming a lot of my time. So I have an indicator called average true range. So I'm going to write down AVE, and then I'm going to click and drag it to the right. Let's just go through some things here. The average true range, what it does is exactly the, the thing that we did. It's comparing the length that the candle has fluctuated through, and it's giving us approximate, approximately a range. Okay, this is why it's called average true range. It's one of the accelerators. Okay, we're gonna keep it as wilders. Uh, simple means it's gonna grasp just the difference between the high and the low. Weighted is something else, exponential is obviously the potential growth uh, growth and so on. In the length, we can change it from the amount of candles that we wanted to analyze. So right now it's gonna go 14 weeks backward. Why weeks? Because again, this is weekly, weekly uh, time frame. okay? Let me bring it up. Okay, so that depending, I'm gonna show you in a, in a, in a minute that it's changing according to the time frame we choose. So right now, I don't think we need to go so many candles, so many uh, weeks backward. I think seven might be enough, okay? A week, a week and a, uh, a month, a month and a half. Okay, the color doesn't make any difference. Okay, so it's showing me Danny Platinum is moving approximately $41 per week currently for today. If I'm looking at uh, a month backward, that would have been a little higher. If I'm looking two months backward, it's, well, even higher. If I'm looking at today, well, existing ATR is 41, five, uh, 520. If I'm changing it to days, it's going to change accordingly. So now it's counting seven days, right? Seven days because we're looking at days and so on. All right. Now, how can I know if 1030, let me, uh, let me put it down for you guys as a question, right? So is um, 910 to 1030 is in our... ATR range. What do you think, guys? Is it more or less than the range? Let me give you a hint. I'm going to give you guys approximately 10 seconds to answer this question. Otherwise, I'm revealing the answer. There is a question here Does one candle present the full week? on one week yeah yeah that's exactly what it does let me show you you see the date here is the 18th the date here is the 11th the date here is the fourth and so on and so on seven days difference yeah okay matt you're saying it's way more than the range very good matt okay who else thinks that from here to here it's more than the range again the range is 41 let me just give you a hint what distance we are talking about, okay? $120. Yeah, that's that's the movement between the current price to my supposedly um, destined price. And yeah, that's way above the range. If I'm looking for something that is in my range, 
that can be that can be even that right so you can see this is forty dollars from where we are at the range is 41 it's still in the range okay so let's go with 40 maybe even 35 yeah 35 why did i go for 35 and not for 41 because i understand that 41 is not a guaranteed figure and what can happen is i can have my take profit here right and it's going to get very close to it very close to it like it did here and it's not going to be triggered so i'll have analysis 99 percent corrected and i'll end up making nothing because if it gets to here and turn around okay yeah now when i take 35 i actually say in advance okay i aim for lower price as a precautious and i'll make it queen now let's see what's the necessary lot size how many units do we need to accomplish 700 dollars with 35 dollars per ounce okay so for that we're going to use a very simple equation which is target divided by movements equals units in other words in other words guys let's do it together who knows the answer for that matt somebody let's see who gets it right correct 20 exactly as i wrote here right as the calculated already showed us so 20. now if i want to know how many ounce how many ounces of platinum in here will we will be represented in the load size i can just go as i as i did before see that 100 uh, that one is 100 therefore 0 0.2 is uh, 20 or i can simply write here 20 and it's going to do it by itself yeah and let's see if it makes sense or not so 945 is our destined price it seems like planning to fluctuated down a bit so the profit grew a little bit but it's fine okay now we have a well composed position Regardless analysis, we didn't get to any any analysis part, but now we know that the numbers make sense, and that's not bad to begin with. Okay. And now we have a simulated take profit at 945. Okay. And stop loss is also something we might want to include. And that works as I have explained par uh, priorly. Take profit closes my position, getting to my destined price. It closes it with the profit stop loss. It closes it with the loss. Always, always, when I'm buying, my take profit has to be higher, and my stop loss has to be lower. I could adjust it and have a trailing stop, and that means that right now platinum is 909. Let's suppose that it got to here okay and my take profit is let's say that my take profit is 945 and it got to here so what i can do is i can use my stop loss here as a stop loss as a trailing stop and if it gets down to here i'm still going to make profit okay it's a little complicated for now i just brought it, wanted to explain just the uh the term okay now let's simulate as if we would want the same length of 30 35 dollars from our entry goal our entry point to the stop loss and see what can be the case so that's 909 minus 35. obviously it will be the same a little more a little more because because of the spread okay we're not getting into that now and actually we do maybe it's something you should know so the spread is the difference between the bid and the ask and the way that it works is when i'm opening a position the spread will be multiplied by the amount of units i'm taking and i will begin with a with the position minus the spread okay this is why i always has to make sure if i'm scalping or doing fast-paced trading 
that I cover the spread in order to make profit and I don't start from zero. Okay, that's part of the uh, part of the position and we should know that. And as, a, as well, if I click here on the instrument details, it shows me here, if I'm holding the position overnight, I have swap, which is overnight fee. Okay, and it can be easily calculated by here. You can address your account manager and ask for assistance to know how the swap work. In here, it's calculated weekly, in here daily, and so on. Oh, let's. <laughs> and we got to make sure when we are switching between the tabs that it's not wiping out our numbers. Okay, so let's bring that to here. Let's bring that to what was our eight. Seven four. Oops. Let me write it down here. Eight seven four. Okay then. And we are okay now. The problem is it's not really a problem, but I'm going to show you a way here how to optimize your stop loss. Okay, how to measure if the risk that you're taking is is uh, something that you like or not. So what we're going to do is simply take the seven hundred here and compare it with our balance. So 10,000 minus 700 is 9,300, which brings us to 7% uh, exposure. There is a question here, can you please explain the swap charge, is it daily or weekly? Didn't quite understand, okay. So this is an excellent question, thank you very much. The swap is calculated yearly, but it's charged daily. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, if you are holding a position over a day, you're gonna see swap on the position with a certain figure. You will be charged only when you close the position, but the calculation itself is from yearly over a yearly overview point. Okay, it's from yearly overview and not daily overview. And that means that if you're holding the position for, let's say, seven uh, days, in each day, you're going to see the swap growing. Okay, each you're holding it overnight, you're going to see the higher number. But the calculation itself is done from yearly perspective. I hope that this makes sense. Now, as we see here, the 7% presented on the uh, sorry compared to our balance because again 10 percent out of 10,000 is 10 okay it's a thousand therefore this is showing us potential seven percent not sure how I'm, I'm happy with the seven percent and as well with my rnr rnr uh, ratio by rnr ratio i mean my risk reward ratio okay this is my risk this is my reward r and r ratio is something we want to be able to uh, adjust. Now, how can I adjust 7% loss, potential loss, exposure, let's call it, to three and a half. Anybody has any idea, how can I make my 7% three and a half? Let's suppose that I'm not really happy with then I'm not really happy with 7% exposure. I want to make it lower. Anybody has any idea? You minimize. Well, I could. I could. Thank you, Dave. I could minimize the load size. It's, maybe it's something I would do. Let's just show the audience here what happens if I do it. Right? So let's suppose that I minimize it to 0.1. Then I lose less, potentially less, but also it has an impact on my take profit. Otherwise, what I can do is I can just drag the stop loss from here, 891. Yeah, something here doesn't make sense. Did it move another dollar? Yeah, it seems like it seems like it moved another one okay that's fine so from 874 which is here okay i can move it upwards can move it upwards and then it's showing us 344 okay now 
Okay, if okay, it's gonna keep on moving. It's gonna keep on moving. So you you should just know it needs to be 350, but it keeps on moving, and I don't want to keep adjusting the number after the decimal. But this is a very nice way. So you either get the stop loss closer, or you can change the load size. But if you change the load uh, the load size, take in consideration that the uh, potential profit will be affected as well. Okay. Do we have any questions, guys? Any questions till this point? I'm gonna write down something here that will help us understand how the leverage works. So we have price per unit, multiply units, equals value, and we have value divided by leverage, equals margin impact, Okay, and margin impact equals necessary amount to open a position. Now let's use this position as an example and understand how it works. Okay, so we said price per unit. What is price per unit? This is 908. We have the buy and the sell price. We're gonna write down 908. And we're gonna multiply that by the units. How many units we have? 20, right? Can everybody see it? 20. Okay, so we're gonna multiply that by 20. It's already written here. The value is 18,198. 18,198. Okay, so that's our value, you see, value. Okay, the leverage here is one to 10. One, one, to 10. Uh, what leverage does is it multiplies buying and selling. Okay, as you can see here, by the way, it's, say, it's saying it again by pointing on the I bubble. You don't have to remember it. It's showing it to you. Okay, and lastly, value divided by leverage equals margin impact. So we're going to do 18,198 divided by 10 equals, you don't even need a calculator for that. Okay. Yeah, very, very simple. We have a, how do I change my leverage? I'm sorry, but this is not something, as I have explained initially, it's not something we casually do. You can ask your senior account manager and see, uh, depending on the case. Oscar, I was trying to pay per trade yesterday, and it says I had to have a minimum stop loss, which is significantly lower than the entry at least 20% below the stock price. Is this a common thing and can it be avoided? Right, so Oscar, some assets has a certain minimum length between your entry to the destined uh, stop loss. That is absolutely right. And there are certain instruments moving in uh, minimum increments. That means that some assets are moving by pips, some uh, assets are moving by increments of uh, 25 cents or half a dollar or a dollar. You, you need to check with your account manager and see what the case is. But that is absolutely right. What you wrote down is absolutely right. There is a certain minimum between the length of my entry to the stop loss, so I won't end up uh just let me just show you okay right why can't i have my stop loss you see what happens right you see what happens what will happen is because of the spread as i have explained like 10 minutes ago maybe less i can end up making a opening a position and having a loss so this is something we don't want our traders to opening a, a losing position, right? A position that is destined to be triggered and closed with a loss. So we are asking for a certain minimum between the open 
to the star plus. This, by the way, did this work exactly the same way with MT4, MT5, okay? Not just the web trader. Okay, and now we're gonna do some analysis. Do we have any questions about anything, anything that I said so far? Okay, so let's proceed. Actually, let's let's do some analysis. Now, when I'm looking at the chart here, it seems like let, let's talk about support and resistance, okay? Just just for just for a bit. So what's support and resistance? Support and resistance, let's me let me get rid of a couple of things here so I can show you comfortably. Okay. So this is one. Now, support and resistance are outcome of certain pivot points that we can find on the chart. Okay. And it, support will always be the, the lower, the lower, um, the lower, the lower prices. I mean, lower than the actual price, the current price. Resistance will always be the higher line. So if I'm looking at it from a rectangle perspective, as as a room if this would have been a room so this would have been my just a second so if this is from a rectangle pr uh, perspective as you can see this is the ceiling okay this 995.5 is my ceiling and the bottom is 844 okay and let's get rid of it just for the sake of the discussion and we can see we have some nice support and resistance levels so this is one as you, as you can see this is another one now why is that important for me to identify support and resistance anyway right well the main reason is that support and resistance often broke when something fundamental happens okay otherwise the asset can be entering a consolidation area which you can see some assets just keep bouncing around the same levels, but nothing happens. Now, when something fundamental happens, then you see such as gold, silver, or platinum sometimes, okay, it's less, less, of, a, it's less of a safe haven as compared to gold or, uh, or others, but you can see here that still it's responding to those, to those news as well like interest rate decision and some others. Now, it's important to identify a support and resistance because if the asset is heading to a certain level, which we saw, and by the way, we're doing this exercise with Wix, right? But this could be done on days, okay? Or you see there are certain levels here. We're just not, not uh, I don't wanna waste a lot of time doing it because our time is on the essence. You can do this exercise support and resistance with any other asset, okay, even scalping. Now, when I'm looking at weeks, okay, and I'm adding to our, on top of our composition, I'm adding analysis. And right now, the first thing that I want to think about is my entry. Okay, let's get rid of the things that we placed here. It was mainly to show you, but I don't want to confuse anyone. So. Okay, now we're seeing that we're in the middle of the consolidation area between the bottom to the support, uh, between, the, between the support to the resistance. And I have a reason to believe that, okay? And I have a reason to believe that from this place, we have even a, we have even a, a, closer, a closer support line. Even that can be counted as a support line. Absolutely, guys. There is no limit to how many support lines you have. Though this is why they're not individual and they are in levels. Now, if I'm looking at where it's at right now, and I think, okay, this candle here, we can see the tip of this candle, okay, is showing us that it's been visiting a certain price and went down, okay, this tail here, we can actually, we can actually, capture it and see what happened on that day 
And we can see that it was failed to, per to proceed beyond that price. Okay, it's a bit difficult to show you. And by doing that, I understand, okay, if it was rejected here and then it started uh, plunging down, this is already the second, day, uh, second week that it happens. I have a reason to believe that it's going to go farther down. Again, I'm, again, I might be wrong. This is still undefined. This is not, um, I can't identify here any formation, but it's a beginning of my analysis. This is if I choose to enter here, I understand what can be the potential consequences. And I understand here I have a, a, a support line, here I have a support line that hasn't reached. Still, it's, it still it has its way down but then again from the other side you see that it was rejected so many times so i also have a reason to believe that it will, might not break it and turn around going up okay now unfortunately we are out of time uh, i just wanted to show you how to get a better overview how to get a, a good entry and perhaps to start understanding how analysis is structured of course, there are many, many more things that I can use here. I can add a Fibonacci retracement. I can, again, add indicators like RSI and understand if it's something is overbought or oversold. I can have uh, Bollinger Bands just to help me understand if I'm still in the range or it already broke it and then I can expect reversal. There are many things, okay? But this is a good place to begin with. Anyway, guys, unfortunately, we are out of time. I hope that everybody enjoyed this webinar and learned from me at least something, one good thing. Uh, yeah, you're all welcome to tomorrow's live Q&A. Other than that, I wish you all a fruitful week, make a lot of profits, and have a good day.